to me grand. Sam, come back. You're not to go in your grand till I tell you. Wait for me at your Uncle George's. I'm reading it. You got your hands on that pretty fast, didn't you? I didn't wait for me dad's. I bought me own. And before they goes on at me for a spendthrift, I start on Monday. It's there at the moment, it? You'll be working? Well, they don't pay for sitting on your backside. You're back at the face? After five years, I'll do. No one's jam on it. Nay, it'll be all age or such. Somewhat over two quid a week after stoppages, we'll be to look. Where do you think you're going? Out. Five years sitting on your backside, and that's all you've got to tell me? Oh, well, there's nothing else to tell. Except my snap tin's rusted. Can't get it open. Never mind your snap tin. Put your bum on that chair. I'm talking to you. I'm talking about bums. I've no bannockers now. You've known about this since last you were at Labour, haven't you? Why do you not tell me? Oh, I'm trying to sort out about me dad. Telling him, like, seven years he's been on door. First in line, be right. It's his deal. It's not up to you to make way for him. Your dad's never going to work again, George. Andy knows hey. it. Yes, he does. He's not but 50 odd. He's in Fetler. Uh. I should be glad to be back with the lads, though. I will that. You're not be that much better off. Sid Tufton's on a day wage. You were sent home twice last week. Three shifts he worked. Oh, it's not just brass being on door. It sours you. Sours me dad. You never out else but sour him. Here, now, don't bloody start on about him again, for God's sake. I'll say what I want to say about him or anybody else, and don't you bloody swear at me, neither. Well... He's all right to me, Dad. Aye, his small doses. It's starting already, is it? Answering me back. Thinks he's a man, cos he's working again, does he? You'll need them bannockers on Monday. Well, you best try mine for size, then. You'll not be first as was to turn up in his wife's bloomers. Hey, up, Sam. Is it thee? Hello, Uncle. Your mum's behind me. Is she? My dad's gone to Manchester. Manchester, eh? What's he gone to Manchester for? I think he got from the granddad Toby. Dora? Excellent. Ah. Harry, gone to Manchester, eh? Stop here and don't go on your grands. Stop here with your Uncle George. George Semmy will be right. They name you after me, you know. How is then, eh? Didn't expect a sight of you this side of Christmas. Have you been next door to your mum's? No, not yet. He's gone again. Harry? He's gone. You know where? Manchester, he said. Two days going round the warehouses for his dad, he said. A week since he left. No word from him? No. No word from him. What's his dad think, then? He thinks what I think. Anyway, there's money missing this time, so that clinches it, doesn't it? He's put Harry's brother in shop. You think he's gone for good, then? No, same as last time, that's all. Bad company. What sort of well, bad company? Well, you know what sort. Gambling, he called it last time. I found out different, didn't I? But he's taken money this time. Oh, he'll be back when he's spent it. He'll be back then. Will you take him back? No. No, not again. Just no one's again, will you? No. That does. That's just saying that, cos they're not asked thee. That mustn't be backwards in coming forwards, then, knows. Sam know? No, of course he doesn't know. Well, if you mean what you say, he's going to have to know, isn't he? 
be brought up on the poor law, like most of the kids around here. Not when I can work, he won't. Work? Where? Work? For a grown man, let alone a woman. If he comes back, you'll have what most of the women round here have never had. A man in work. And proper paid at that. You expect me to take him back from another woman? Ah, if that he brings a loaf of bread with him, I do. Will you tell me Mum I've come? My dad might be in. Oh, why? He's not going to like it, is he? She'll tell him better than I can. Isn't the like skeleton, then? It's mucky. It's mucky, the cuddy. <laughs> I'm not saying so, would they? They're a funny lot of cuddy, my ear. They're not. They are, the knows. When the weighs them up. They're a funny lot here. That's talking about me now. I'm in this. They went out here 60 or 70 years ago. Except a few farms, that's all. They sunk for a shaft about then. Your granddad lived in a little village near Skipton when they left to come here. His dad had to come to work in pit. There were no work where they come from. How old was he? Oh, eight year old when he come here. There were 7,000 people here then. They'd sunk two more shafts in houses they'd built. All them back to backs up by Tommy Harrison's here. That's where we lived first off. We come in a little cart with all we'd got. You didn't. No, I. If my granddad put eh, you weren't born. I didn't say I were. You said we come in a cart. Ah, well, we did. I mean, I might not have been born, but I were one of them, weren't I? I mean, I were to come. I were one of them. Does they want me to tell you, doesn't they? But the granddad didn't like coming here. Everybody thought it was a mucky old like me. Well, he'd have to do what his folks wanted, didn't he? For work. He ain't got no work. No, but he were a good worker in his day with your granddad. Looked up to he was. None better. He's fallen on hard times, that's all. We had general strike here after you were born. Half country were out. But when they went back, miners carried on. You were a big man round here then, your granddad. Paid the price since. And he has that. Is that why he's cross? <laughs> Aye, happen. Go and lay the tours with your cousin Fred, eh? All Isn't right. <laughs> Pitfields without Frank. Oh, good. What the play with him? Oh, it's him. He's holding back. Else it's them bloody dogs he's wearing. Fred! Lake we young Sam! A young bugger. They'll not let him in, else he pushes himself forward. He'll have to learn then, won't he? Here, yeah, what's up with our Dora? Can't you guess? Harry taking his hook again, has he? Aye, and you know what that means, don't you? You'll have to learn to wash behind your lugs again, won't you? They'll be sleeping on sofa tonight, the nose. We sold mattress and they couldn't weigh it. Aye, Mum told me. And whenever they comes again. So if I were there, I'd stop away. There's not here for thee to come back to. I shall be sleeping on sofa from time to time. I would an awkward little bugger from the day they were born. Think they'll take to this new school then? Ah. Huh? Old Daddy Watkins told me passing school end till the day. He said it should have been university for thee with proper chances. He looked at me as if I let you down or something. If he thought that much on you, why was you laid off? Well, he had to cut staff down by two. I was last in, first out, I suppose. The university, I couldn't put my mind to it in those days. Not to do with he. Well, I didn't think it was. I just want to make sure you didn't think so, neither. <laughs> if we'd got that council house with extra room, it might have been different. Might have been. Then again, it might not. We did what we could. Best get on. Thank God you've got another job at any road. Anything that takes you away from this mucky hole is for the better. 
Uh, I'd leave up here if I thought you might get work. I suppose you thought I should have kept my mouth shut eight years back. Kept my mouth shut and kept my job. No, I don't think that. I hope I'd have done the same. The times were against you, Dad. Aye, and I didn't have a soft seat in Downing Street like Mr. Ramsey MacDonald. Easily satisfied with Ramsey. Him and Jimmy Thomas with his dicky bow. A generation of working men it costs. My generation. Three quarters of the population paid to put the creases in their bloody pants. I've been a socialist all my life. And it sticks in my throat when I think that if I'd voted Lloyd George instead of MacDonald, I'd likely be working still. Ah, they'll be work again. Will they? Another bloody war. That's all that's going to put us back in work again. And when the lads come marching home, they best keep their rifles in their hands. They'll get the rights no other way. I hope there's another way. There isn't. You can take my word for it. I've seen them all tried. And where have they got us? You can go on hoping for a lifetime. You've only got one, lad. Don't spend it all hoping. Let somebody in this bloody family do something in life, for God's sake. That and coming. Here, you can have my if you want. Yeah. Why didn't she come and tell me herself? She thought her dad might be here. Don't let that spoil for it. She'll not run away. There'll be a bit left over for you and George. We'll be all right for a week or two. We sold a mattress. I didn't want to send our Frank off empty. You don't excuse yourself to me for affording meat. I'm not the means test. He'll come back again. I'm sure he will. She'll give him the welcome this time, so she says. It's a pity he never were glad for the smell of pig's offal. He'd have been content to stay where he were. Yeah, he's spoiled by his dad, that one. That's what Jack always said. Can you pass me that spoon, love? Aye, but threatening to break his jaw doesn't help keep him rooted, does it? He wanted her to marry out at Pitt. Jamming it, he wants. Should have had to pass an exam to satisfy him. I'll go to her in a minute. No, it's young Sam she's got to think of now. <coughs> Christ, I've no bairns. You shouldn't all from having bairns. Well, that I shall not now, if I can break the habit. He's in work. George? Aye. Back at Pitt. It's held to somebody seven to him. He's a man again. Thank God for that at any road. Aye, and for a pig's fry in exchange for a mattress. Oh, Lord, I forgot we've sold the mattress. Three to a bed tonight, Polly. And George wanting to celebrate his manhood. Oh, <laughs> he'll not take kindly to sharing a bed with his dad. <laughs> <laughs> We've a visitor. Hey, Our Laura's come home. Comes here, Frank off, has she? I'd best ask him there. I'm saying out. Got any brass left? Let's go down to Sally Walsh's. She? She's next door at Eccles. What's she doing there? Thinking of having a week when I left. I'll break his bloody jaw. What did I tell you? You keep out of this! Don't you wave your belt at me, Jack Barraclough. You've got to find him first, haven't you? To crack a nut, you've got to have a nut. Sally Walsh. Hi. She is. She walks out here and across pit fields at night. Aye, she does. She were a witch. She lived with Devlin at Long Row. Same house as Thomas is living. That's why we ain't got to lake here, my gran says. Only we do then us. Aye. When it's late we do. She never comes up here when it's late. Only at night then us. This devil she lived with. Vanished one night. And a bit later on. She walked in after him, but it's a door into hell, as this me gran says. Then get out here and drag you in. He would have called you, wouldn't he? I she live with. 
He were a devil. Oh, aye, Billy were a collier as well. He were a devil. And she were a witch. And she walks pit fields at night. And that's gospel from my gran. Dora? Dad? Love? <laughs> Love? <laughs> nay, do not fret this cell. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. I'll straighten him out. I'll straighten him out this time. I've come with nothing. I just walked out. I heard a voice in my head saying go, and I went. And here I am. And a good thing too. You think so, do you? Do you know about it? Nothing much. That you were unhappy, that's all. And Sam, you think I've done right by him because I'm unhappy there? It rubs off onto people around you, unhappiness. He'll see for the best when he grows up. And what's he to grow up with, Frank? What we had, you and me. We'd meet Dad for one thing. Wasn't always a blessing, was it? Not for you and George. For you? I don't know. What do you think? I think you'd be better away, maybe. Where? A man up sticks where a woman can't. Well, maybe I could help when I get settled in Durham. Help me? What about your own life? What are you going to Durham for, anyway? There's a job there. Sounds like out at the frying pan into fire to me. I thought they're as bad off as us up there. They are, but there's a job as a teacher. Around here somewhere, there's probably somebody from up there who's had to come down here for a job as a teacher. So mad. Ah, it's that. Dad's never forgotten that village, you know, where he was born and raised. Little white houses he used to talk about, with a stream at Cider Road. Does it matter being brought up with the stacks on your doorstep? Matters to Dan. He knew something different. I'm going upstairs to lie down. I'm worn out with it all. Tell Ethel where I've gone. I will. Who is it? Jack Barraclough. Uh, that'll be expecting me. Uh, I suppose so. Let's come into the back room. Here's the missus in there. Aye. Uh -huh. Then I'll stop where I am. She'll like it better, and I'm damn sure I will. There's no call to be offensive, lad. I'm telling truth no more. You and me were in the same class together. We bred each other's nits. We've not much in common, but with that. A late gush. Has done well with the brass the granddad left thee. Two shops and a missus from Ponty Lane. I've not seen thee as a customer, as far as I remember. Oh, they will when they start giving them away. Where is he? I wish I knew. I bet they does. He's gone off with some of the brass, hasn't he? I'm saying not about that. Ah, protecting the own. Well, I'm on same errand, but mine's more in need than thine. It's her that's been wrong, not thine. I'm not his keeper. That is bloody father. Ah, well, I'm finished with him after this. Ah, and that lets the yard. What about my lass? Stop bloody perambulating and stand still, can't we? I should never have wed. 
It were a bigger sorrow to me than it were to her in there, I can tell you. I like the lash. He weren't fitted, that's all. Too much of his own road all his life, you're Harry. Not for me, he didn't. I ruined him, Toby. Not me, lad. I should have wrapped the belt around Not him. Not me, lad. Like gaffer, aren't they? Well, we'll not dwell on that. I've seen neither Hyde nor Erdman. He'll be made to do what's right when he does show. Aye, uh, will, I can promise thee. His mother will back me there. I'll be back for mattress tomorrow. I've no means of carting it tonight. Mattress? You've got to get where you can. They slept on the mattress, didn't they? Of course they did. And blankets. Plenty of blankets. Hey, Jack, I ne'er saw them short. I'll tell you what, Toby. Them nits that left me to breed on thee, they weren't bloody daft. But them that left thee to breed on me were bloody martyrs. Tickle the crystal. Just about there. Just there. That's where I always tickle it. You're out. Talking. Music. <laughs> I shall have lodgers to pay for, but I'll send what I can. You keep your mouth shut about that. I'm only telling you. Yeah, well, don't tell me nor anybody. When Tony Salter went at labour for his money last week, they told him he'd been knocked off door. A tattletale. Aye. His granddad left him a three-piece sweet, so he sold it, and somebody told. It was a mother-in-law, they thought. As long as there's a means test them and starve for all you're known to do about it. They'll be poking around as soon as you've left to see if you've left a few pennies in meter. They'll get Dad's tongue if they do. <laughs> Why, he's good with his tongue and his principles. Those are that suffers as well as him for his tongue and his principles. George! He's still at each other's throats. Yeah, he never took to me, and never took to him. Apart from that, we're getting lovely together. Just the one? Take this candle up to the front bedroom and tell you, Adora, it's high time she'd somewhat to eat and don't take no for an answer. You want us to wake her? Well, I'll be talking to a post if there doesn't want the. He thinks it's going to be all bright and beautiful now he's in work. There was a collier started when he did, bought his own house last year, and he thinks it's going to be like that. It could have been like that for that. Oh, you're just like George. You give him too much credit. When I was at school, I lived off my dad. The best first man in skeleton. He was in front row of everything. Party, federation, hospital committee. Only thing he wouldn't put himself off for was council. Ah, was Jack Barraclough's lad and I lived off it. Little weed that I was. He's not in front row now, Frank. Seven years out of work, a lot of his bite's gone. Waste. Waste. There, don't want him now. The bigger dogs have in the day. Hey, old Ben. Yes. Ethel says you to come and eat some of I'm all right. She says I'm not to take no for an answer. I'll come down in a minute. Is Sam all right? Do what you're worried about, Sam. I shall watch out for Sam. Tired, are you? Aye. I'm tired. If I can borrow tackle. Will you? Uh, and rabbit in in Bedswood with Ruby's whip it. You like that? Bet his dad never took him rabbit in. No, he never did. It'll wear off the nose. <laughs> Will it? Oh, uh, it'll wear off. I shall take him fishing, and I shall take him rabbiting, and I shall take him to watch football and all. It's time you had a lad of your own. Mm, we tried once. Once? Well, I mean, 
with intent buying. She'd always said we should wait until we could afford it, and then I got work on face, and she said, right, time's come, right. Now it happened. Then I fell out of work again, and she'd have none. I think she'll open the door to me again now. Tonight. Hi. You want to Woody? Yeah. I was sorry to hear about the dad. Hi. He worked with me, you know. Hi, I know I did. They're burying him day after tomorrow, Polly said. Aye. Now but there. Aye. Is there any blankets, Will? Blankets? Now Dora's come home with a lad and we've knocked for him. I was wondering with the dad like uh, it's cold and we're short of blankets. Just to lend on them, the knows. He'll be glad for George. I know he will. And Ethel shouldn't think different. I told her it's just that George wants to tell him himself. Ah, the poor lad. He'd put the job on a plate and give it to him if he could. He loves your dad, you know. The one that's had the least of him cares the most. <laughs> that could be true. It is true. I know it's true. It's our maid, I suppose. I wish you'd not sold the mattress. I mean, apart from Dora coming back. It wasn't just the money. The young lass were pregnant. Heard that Malcolm Langley's caught in? Her dad threw her out. Malcolm's mum took him in, but they're no mattress. It were your dad that said yes in the end. Ah, I don't want me to think I could easily come back. For your own good, Frank, only for that. Ah, I know. He thinks I'm not resolved to get away. It shut the door against me to make sure I do. But he can't make me want to go, ma'am. I'd sooner have had a job round here if there'd been one. Any job. And let us go on living off you. He sees it like that, not me. Your dad kept you out at pit by keeping you at your studies. They'd not want to see you throw it away now. You'll do better where you're going than by stopping here. Nice, right, I'll go for mattress tomorrow. You asked him then? No, I told him on my road out. I told him we'd need some blankets and all. I didn't get these off Toby. I got a lend on them till tomorrow. It was four. I'll take two round with me. I'm just off now. I'll send our George back. And the young un? He wants to stay with Dora. You can't decently get four in yon bed. Send him round here. He says he wants to stay with her, Jag. Never mind what he wants. It's I want that sent his father off. I want this and I want that and to well with everybody else. I won't have it in this house. Do as I say, Polly. see you with always in your drawers. He'd never let me forget it. I like my own bed, I do. Well, sleeping with your dad will help you to appreciate it. I'm not jumping anything. Come on, lad. Get a move on, will you? Let's get to bed. Oh, come on, lad. I want to go, Grandad. The what? I want to go, Grandad. Well, why didn't I say so before? I didn't want Grandad. Well, he can use Paul, can't he? No, he can't. That knows where to go. 
I'll come with thee. No, the won't. He's big enough to go on his own. Off the goes, and don't be all night about it. Jubilee's just let out. They'll be spewing all up and down Gillard, lad's not used to it. He'd have to get used to it if he lived here, wouldn't he? Well, I and now's his chance to learn. Happen you've got the right time in future. I want to go any road. Without a bloody lie. I am not. A bloody lie thou art. Sit there, I've ripped me bloody pants for thee. I'm just down know whether I want to go or not. It's felt me bladder or summit. I said I want to go and I do want to go. And I'm going. So you can put that in his pipe and smoke it. <laughs> oh. hey. uh. All right, lad. There's somebody in. Hey. Oh, it's there, bit chopper. Shut that bloody door. Can't ever wait till he gets home. I've caught the atlas before. Shut it, I said. I'll not wait all that he called for thee. What's to think about it there, Gina? Oh. I'll stop it here the bloody morning, if I'm a mind. I won't, I knows. But I'll drag thee out with his pants around the boots if he doesn't get a move on. Took in the way to Bartella, just cast as he work again. Who told thee how he work? Mate, we're all right, Jubilee, to need. There's only foul in row he work, and they're all born idle. Be the bloody for the next barrel. Right, chopper, there's ass for me. Come on, Get in there, lads! Look, George, look, George! Get in there, lads! Look, George, you've already been! If there were no point in waking her, will she sleep through? Oh, she'll sleep through all right. When she were a little lass, any bit of trouble, she'd off to bed to sleep it away. She'll not sleep this away, Mum. She'll not wake and find this gone tomorrow. Happen tomorrow, she'll go up better. Aye. She'll be warm between us, any road up. Aye. Just a sleeping coat, then? Ooh, aye, do with this weather, don't you? I've been tempted to when there's ice on glass. Though he's warm in bed, is Jack. Then he'd say it weren't in keeping, you know. Mm. Oh, there's not much body in these blankets, is there? We're thinking of him now in her sleep, missing him. Thinking it might all come up ever after like a fairy story. And him, bloody selfish bastard, you how ethel. No, now. you want to have a good cuss now and again. Like a spit in a cough, it clears your tubes. Is he off then? No, he's off. <laughs> He was scared stiff when Chopper come at me. What did they let him hit thee for? I told thee. He caught me on the up. Sly like. Then I was Chopper. I know thee and all. Something to do with thee being in work, was it? Who told thee how would it work? Never mind who told me. Why did they say no? Why didn't they tell me? I were going to tonight till they started racketing on. Without a liar. I am thou a liar too. There's a jerry under this bed. I never said there wasn't. I said he couldn't use it, that's what I said. There go coke ovens. Sending him out when there's no need. He might as well face worse now as later. There's only one place for him, she don't go back to Yon, and that's here. She'll go back. There's not far around here. Happen she will, happen she won't. We shall see, shan't we? And I shall use it if I have a mind to. I'm not going up there again. We're getting Coggy's hand cart. So if the right's done what they wants, we shall know what's right to bring, shall we? I'm not stopping for long, Dad. Even if I have come away, I never said I'd come to stop. We know that, love. We know that. Just to let him in. I can go back and live there any time I want. Nobody can stop me doing that. I'd like to see him try. 
But we must get yon mattress, mustn't we? Just till we get things worked out. And there's one or two bits and pieces you want for yourself and the lad, won't you? It's not to look as if I'd gone for good. I don't want it to look like that. But it's not for thee to go crawling back to him, lass. It's for him to come on his hands and knees to thee, my love, as he will. Same as he did last time. And what did I tell you then? What did I say, eh? Didn't I tell you he'd come back? And isn't that what he did, eh? Wasn't it right then? You told me he'd never go away again, Dad. You told me that as well. I'll go and see if there's anything I need. It'll just be bits of things, mind. Just for a day or two. Mum? Your hair's not brushed. There's a thought. They were going to take him back again, she said yesterday. Aye, and if things were different, she never bloody would. Aye, and if pigs could fly. I thought I were badly off. At least I know what I'm up against. You can count yourself lucky, you can, missus. Oh, I do, master. I do. For a decent man, though, he hasn't worked for five years. For a bed, though, it hasn't blankets enough. And for not having nobody ever promised me out, I'm not going to get. What do you mean by that? I'll let it out for yourself. Enough to worry, Tom, without you and me getting cracking. Uh. I'll let it out for yourself. Going home, Mum. Mum. What? When are we going home, Mum? When? Yes, when? And when we do, you can nothing to do as you're told. And speak when you're spoken to, and not upset your dad like you do. Or one day he'll go away and he won't come back. He won't come back one day and never, ever, never come. The better this end. Front end always feels a bit cuddy. Uh, change at Wakefield then. Have to cross over. Uh, get the bus under the bridge there. Why don't you try Gospel Hall, Dad? You've stayed out seven years. You've made your point. You see, they're running later. That clock's out. If you want to work in Skeleton, you go to Gospel Hall. You know that. I'm not in work for the same reason as everybody else. There isn't any bloody work. Dad, I shall be leaving in a few minutes. They'd find work for you if you went back. They'd see it as a victory for them. It's how you see the matters. I mean, it's to an end, if you like. You lose touch with your mates when you're out to work and looking never to go back again. No, I've lost that. It's too late for all that. And, Mum, what would it mean to her to see you walking straight again? Do you think I haven't thought of it all? All you've just said. I did it, God help me. And don't you let on to anybody. I went back to Gospel Hall, and do you know what they told me? You're too late, my lad, they said. You're two years too late. That's what they said, and that's all they said. And I crawled away, and I've been crawling ever since. I thought that I ever went back. What was it that little buggy Johnny used to say in pulpit? I doesn't need to fornicate to commit adultery. It all needs to think on't. My God, I know what he meant now. Dad! She couldn't keep away, you see? It's not that, love. It's young Sam. He's gone. Gone? Where? We don't know. We just can't find him. George turned his back for five minutes and he were off. Like father, like son. Best stop and see the lad off then. Dad. Get thee to a better place, lad. There can't be any worst. Make it go on it. Keep us in the mind, though. How much did you give him? I'll give him the brass. It was a bloody got none. I thought you said he was going to the shop. Well, I do almost to give it to him. Is he back? No, he's not. Did you get Coggy's anchor? No, it's out back. My mum didn't want it seen at the front door. We'd best be off then. What about that lamb? Same as his father. He knows where to come. Ah, well, they're, uh, they're all 22-inch bottoms, so they'll suit you, same. There we are. Ah, that'd be a snug fit. You best try them on any road. I've a, a few more pair downstairs.
Nobody at home? Oh, how do? Shop! I'll just come in. I'm only one pair of hands, you know. Jack, we're on our way to pick up mattress. Our daughter left a key inside. Well, it's open. Our Teddy's looking after the shop for me. I'll come with you if you give me a minute. No need to bother yourself. Hey, nay, I've no but a customer to see. I'll, uh, I'll be right with you. Here we are. That, that's good quality coffee, that one. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come now. We won't take note we're not entitled to, and she wants note but a few bits and pieces just to tide her over. Is she not tacking the lot, then? Barring furniture, I mean. Why should she? Our Teddy's moving into a shop. I sent a lad round with a note. Uh, has he not reached you yet? Dad? Grandad, my gang says. Aye, that's right. It's the grandad number two. So this is where there's got to. I've been looking high and low for thee, lad. I got a bus that came looking for me, Dad. Is that what I give thee pennies for? No, Grandad. Can he not bide a while, Jack? Missus would appreciate it if he could. Wanted to spoil him, is she? Nay, Jack. About that note. He'll come back with us. His mother will be wanting him. I need no note to tell me what's in thy mind, Toby. Get up in front and stop thee. I want thee where I can see thee. We've got enough on this hands without thee taking the oak. Sorry, Grandad. What's to say? Sorry, Grandad. Aye, they'll be sorry all right when I get thee home. Put it down there, and into the scullery with it. Grandad. What did I say when I give thee them pennies? Nothing, Grandad. Yes, I did. Think again. Except for sweets, Grandad. For sweets, aye. I said not about buses and clearing off and worrying folks, did I? No, Grandad. Why for did thou then? I want me dad. There's another thing, isn't there then? I give thee two. It's a threepenny ride to Cuddy. Thou took to the from somewhere else, didn't thou? Yes, Grandad. For the bus. How many? One or more? One. Where from? From on there. Scullery. No, Dad. No? No what? Well, it were me. I should have kept a better eye on him. It was my brass he took. I shall see to him. Upstairs with thee, and don't bother them, ma'am. What's going on? He pinched a penny for the bus. Go and see Toby. My dad were going to leather him. But I did it instead. You'd best leave him be. I want him to know how, why I did it. If he took a penny, you'd best leave him be. You're at the same stable as me dad, aren't you? Don't none of you care that he's lost his father? Lost? Well, didn't Toby's note come yet? 
Look, it was from him, from Liverpool, posted two days back. He sailed for Canada. And that, that woman with him. Why, Dad? Why? Why, Dad? Why? Why do you call them mountains? They can be mountains, Dora. Daft, Dad. Them's not mountains. It's muckstacks, them. Think of them as mountains. For mountains, they can be, with trees on them, and little houses on them, and a river. A river down at bottom where our George can do his fishing. And a grand little place to live in with, with white houses. Not at all, like skeleton. Will you and me, Mum and me and our George and Baby live in a place like that, Dad? One day we shall. One day. We shall build it one day, a place like that. Will it be soon, Dad? When that a woman? Aye, by God, for if not, it'll be too late. And you'll not have to go down pit anymore and get black. Oh, I'll happen have to go down, but I'll come up shining like a new penny. And a water closet will we have? A, a water closet? Oh, we had it out. What will they call it, Dad, this place that you'll build? It's been said that we shall call it Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs>